Gaming Tabletop Gamers, my name is Little Man. Welcome back to Little Man Games. Today we're going to learn how to play the 2-4 player hand management card game SpyNet by Richard Garfield and published by Z-Man Games. In SpyNet, everybody is a spy master and you will be working with a partner in order to recruit agents for different branches of espionage, sending them out on missions in order to earn the most points, as well as coordinating with your partner to make sure you actually have the right setup to complete those missions. The catch is, you are not allowed to speak to your partner at all. Let's get to the table and let's see what's in the box. To set up the game, you first need to divide the players into teams of two and make sure the teams are sitting across from each other. If you don't know what I mean by that, I have a diagram right here that basically shows how the players should be arranged. Next, you need to take all the cards that do not have these green backs on them and shuffle them together to form the main deck. Next, take the top three cards from the deck and place them one next to each other to create three rows. Also leave some space on the other side of the deck because that's your discard pile. Small note, if you are playing your first game, take the cards that have a green back and just put them back in the box. You will not need them for this. Next, give each player one token from each of the four branches and make sure they place it in a row in front of them. Finally, choose a star player. That player will take the top four cards from the deck, look at them, choose one to keep, and then pass the rest over to their right. This will continue until everybody has a hand of one card. Each card comes in one of three different types. There are mission cards which will have a branch's logo as well as, as at least one star in the top left corner. These are what you will be placing in front of you to try to score points for your team. There are agent cards. These simply just have a name, a number, and what they belong to these you will also play in front of you, but these are to dominate the four different branches so that you will be able to actually complete the missions. And lastly, there are funding cards. Funding cards basically go on to the agent cards in order to increase the agent's values. Once you've done all the setup I have previously mentioned, you are ready to begin. Starting with the first player, on your turn, you are going to choose one of two options to either recruit or deploy. Whichever you choose affects what you do on your turn. If you want to recruit, you'll first look at all the cards that are in the first pile, which is the pile furthest from the deck. You will look at all of them and decide whether you want to keep them all or pass on them. If you choose to keep them, then you simply just take all the cards into your hand. If you decide to pass on the cards that you had, you then take those cards, return them face down to the pile, and then move on to the next pile closer to the deck. If you decide to pass again, you move on to the third. If you pass again, you'll simply take the top card on the deck and add it to your hand. After adding the cards to your hand, take one card from the top of the deck and add it to the top of each pile that you have looked at. For instance, since I have looked at all three of these piles, I will add one card to each of them. If however, let's say in a different scenario, I just looked at these two piles and I ended up taking the cards from this one, I would simply just add a card from the top of the deck to the first two piles, including the pile that I just took the cards from. When the deck is empty, you cannot add more cards to piles and it is possible that some piles can stay empty. The other thing you can do on your turn is to deploy. Now, to avoid any confusion, I'm just going to use one set of these branch tokens. When you choose to deploy, you can take as many of the following as you want in any order. You can play one agent card face up above the token of the branch that matches. As you play an agent, you can add one or more funding cards attached to that agent. You can play one mission card face down below the token in each branch you are dominating, which I'll get to later. And lastly, you can take one card from your hand and pass it face down 
to your teammate. As a reminder, you can do as many of these as you want and the order does not matter. To dominate a branch, the total power of your agents has to be higher than both of your opponents. It does not need to be higher than your teammate. So it is possible that both teammates could dominate a branch. If multiple players are tied for the most power in a branch, then no one is dominating it. There are some cards, however, that will belong to multiple branches. For example, these purple cards are mercenaries. There are mercenary agents and missions. They belong to all four branches. So when you play an agent or a mission, you can play it in any branch you want. If you have a mission or agent card that only belongs to two branches, like this smash and grab card, you can only play it in one of those two branches. There are some agent cards that have special abilities, like this one, the Cobra. These abilities happen as soon as you play them. For example, as soon as I play this Cobra, his ability activates, where I will eliminate one agent whose total power is three or less. If you are unable to perform the ability on the card, then the ability is wasted. There are also some mission cards that can only score for you if you meet certain conditions. For example, this three-star asset recovery is only worth points if you are dominating the green branch. When the final card is drawn from the deck, each player, including the player that's currently taking their turn, will get one final turn. During that final turn, you have to deploy. After everybody has taken their final turn, the game is over. When the game ends, every player will gather all the mission cards that they currently have completed, count up all the stars that you have on the missions that you've fulfilled the conditions for, as well as all the stars on the cards that you have will have simply scored, combine your scores with your partner, and whichever team has the most stars is the winner. If you are playing this as a two or three player game, you are playing as individuals, not on a team. So you can't pass cards to each other, and in order to dominate a branch, you have to be higher than both of your opponents in power. If you want to add more variety to the game, you can include these situation cards. Each of these situation cards has an effect that when you play, you simply just lay one out there and the effect affects how the game is played for the entire game. If the situation you are playing with refers to a specific branch, this does not apply to mercenary agents. And that is everything you need to know in order to play SpyNet. As always, if you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will answer them. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. If you want to learn my thoughts on SpyNet, or you want to learn how to play more games, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more tutorials, reviews, and unboxings. Thank you all as always so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.